the Woo here as a recording of this Monday, July 11, 2022. I am in Kentucky, the tiny town of Butler. In fact, the market is right behind me where I picked up this piping hot caffeinated beverage. But I'm just going to go through some of the back roads, tiny towns, and rural areas of the state. I'm inviting you to join me. No real rhyme or reason what I'm doing other than just getting off of the interstates of the freeways, away from the congregations of people, and just seeing what I can see. There is a bird walking along the train tracks. I'm getting distracted. Join me. Cheers, shall you? I have heard of a bird on a wire, not a bird on a train track. It's like walking a tightrope, isn't it, bird? I really like the Butler Deposit Bank, also City Hall, the municipal building, post office here, and of course, as I showed a moment ago, the Butler Market. Quaint little area. Just to show a general layout of the land through this atlas that I've been using. So basically, I am right here at the tip of where my sunglasses meet there. That is Butler, and I'm just gonna venture this way. Now, I could take a more direct route southbound but i'm going to kind of stay on this highway this is 27 i'll be on that for a little bit but i'm going to veer off of that as well and just kind of go down through here that's what i'm thinking anyway i was good to have an atlas i use my phone a lot you know to guide me around on the maps but i also like to have a, a hard copy also looks like this is the downtown got styles 101 tanning sign there that kind of 1970s style signage. Someone's got a little BBQ action going on over here too in the morning. I do love a good old metal bridge. Doesn't get much better than that. You drive over a bridge, it's good to go through an old bridge, old metal bridge like this. Pulling up to the depot here in Falmouth, or Falmouth, Falmouth, F-A-L-M-O-U-T-H. And I'll kind of zoom in on the spelling. Well, I already said it, but The star marks the spot. I am here. Looks like there's a Ferris wheel of some sort next to the star. Still has the marquee here. Some of the letters have fallen off. Appears as if this old theater became a record store at some point because it says records right there. The O has fallen off as well, but bottom of the marquee has kind of deteriorated. Used to play movies in here. Maybe even some stage productions and shows. You could have some of the now appearing coming advertisements there. Oh. Was not expecting this door to be open at all. The music notes on there, the stairway up to the balcony. It doesn't really look structurally sound, so I'm not gonna go in. Plus, probably not the wisest thing to go in there, but yeah, the door's open. I love this, this old vintage in and outside. Now I walked around back and this door's open too, so I guess I could peek in here too. Wow, take a look at this. Can't believe the front and back door is open. Now the balcony probably not good to go up there, but taking a look in the back here, here's where the stage was. Always fascinated by these old theaters. The relics of the past. Really neat. A lot of rusted out metal shards through here. There is a lock, but the door is completely wide open. And a clock tower over there in the distance, but also this bell tower underneath the mural painted on the wall over there. But there is a bell up in the tower itself. You can kind of see it right there in the shadows. Still an active bell. Well, I don't know if it's active, but it's there. Here's some information about it. Bronze bell displayed here was cast in 1882, 
cross the river into Ohio. And just on the outskirts of town is a place called Punkyville. Freshly cut grass here and a water tower and it looks like a few buildings up this driveway. I'm going to walk up there. Got a place called Cousin's Dental, Farmer and Trader's Bank, a hotel, there's an old Coca-Cola machine up there too, and old Pepsi machine as well. Yeah, I got a few little antiques out front. There's the Pepsi, and over here is the Coke. Little barber shop sign. Oh, a rainbow bread. Rainbow is good bread. Look at that. Oh, look at this. this is cool too. There's a wasp or a bee flying around. B and O Railroad. Was that in Monopoly? Was it B and O in Monopoly? Having some Monopoly vibes. See a payphone up there, or at least the shell of one. Here's Robbie's fixing station. This is pretty neat. Here on someone's, in someone's front yard, basically. And this is in memory of Charles M. Beckett, who was nicknamed Punky. He was the builder and creator of Punkyville. And just around this corner are some more buildings. Got the water tower off in the distance. An advertisement for Barks Root Beer up top there also. Oh, there's a train back here. Or at least part of a train lurking in the shadows. Pretty awesome. Very cool little place. And the Justice of the Peace. Probably the jail also. This little wishing well. It's like a kind of a place that Sad Eye Joe would f be incarcerated in. You in there, Sad Eye? Yeah, probably not. It's probably still at knots. There is something really peaceful and cleansing to the soul to just get out away from major thoroughfares, take these little commutes through the woods. At one with your thoughts out here. It could also end badly because a lot of horror films start this way. So far so good. I love the birds chirping. So beautiful out here. Pulling into the town of Oddville, spelled just like it sounds. Classic truck alert over here. It's like someone's inside this building doing something. This truck. Here in Oddville, Kentucky. That's pretty sweet. And this structure appears to be for sale. There's a for sale sign on it. I guess if you wanted some of the debris, you could purchase that. Maybe it was for sale before it caved in. Also, an old car just sitting there. It doesn't look like it runs. And just a few miles up the way is a slightly bigger town of Cynthiana, if I am pronouncing that correct, or Cynthia Anna. There's some zombies here. And the reason that this bench is painted with them, and the reason that the Walking Dead characters are featured up here, is because the creator of that franchise, that television show, is from here in this town. 
This is pretty neat looking. This was painted back in 2016. And I have to be honest, I've only seen maybe the first four or five episodes of the first season, which was the same guy. There's someone yelling behind me. So someone on the corner is yelling at someone else, but it has, I don't think it has anything to do with me. But I've only seen the first four or five episodes of the first season. The director of Shawshank Redemption, well, I love Shawshank Redemption, directed those. And then I think he was fired and someone else took over. But one day, at some point, I will watch the series, but to be honest, I haven't seen all of it. This is a really cool downtown. And up top, this is pretty neat too. This opera house signage. As I go into the shade, you'll be able to see it a little better. Rose Opera House, this old neon. That's right there. This theater. It's now an active movie theater. But they still have the old neon up top. Looks to be the county seat as well. This bank is impressive. National Bank of Cynthiana. Continue driving about another half hour or so and have now arrived in Paris, Kentucky. There is a Paris, Kentucky. And over on the corner is a miniature version of the Eiffel Tower. Very quaint little downtown here. Horses, history, and hospitality. Paris, Kentucky. This stands, I don't know, 25 feet tall, 30 feet tall. Right here in this community parking area. Also has Paris, Kentucky written on that side as well. There's an old five and dime down there, JJ Newberry Company, it looks like. And up top here, the home of good things to eat, it's either fees or three E's and an S. I can't tell from this angle if there's an F, E, E, S. E's or fees. And now entering the town that Admiral Akbar might warn some about. It's a trap. Trap, Kentucky. T-R-A-P-P. -P. It's an extra P in there. A little general store over here called Fox's General Store. This general store, according to the sign on the side, has been open since 1900. been open a long time. Oh, there it is over there. Oh yeah, approaching another metal bridge. Weight limit, 22 tons. I think I'm good. Just a little under 22 tons. Awesome. Making my way into Irvine now. There's some satellite dishes. Sounds like a, doing a little construction down there. Over by that bridge. And this is designated a city. The city of Irvine was founded back in 1812. There is an Irvine, California. A little bit south of Anaheim area, still in Orange County. But this is where the bluegrass kisses the mountains. Yeah, this is completely blocked off there. There's another theater here called the Mac Theater. An old relic of the past. And never hurts to try, the last one was open. ticket booth here. And here's a little info on the name. Named after W.M. Irvine. It was said that he had a strong hold on affections of people. I guess that means people really liked him. Now don't be deceived. This train is not moving. 
but I'm moving past it, so it's kind of hard to tell if it's sitting still or not. But it's sitting still. It's not moving. It's just an optical illusion based on the rate of speed running parallel to this train track and the train sitting on said tracks. Without a doubt, certainly not rush hour out here. In fact, no traffic whatsoever, completely empty road. But as I drove over this bridge, parked on the other side of it, walking back, I noticed that there is a waterfall over here. So I'm gonna go show the waterfall. Looking both ways as I cross back over. Yeah, no cars out here. Haven't seen anyone on this road for a while. Beautiful. Covered a little ground and now arrived, or should I say passing through, the community of Rockholds. Kentucky. A couple churches up on the hill, one on the lower hill, and one up on the higher hill. Now at the moment there is no train going by. In fact, the entire day I'm going past some tracks and haven't seen an active train. I saw the park train. But take a look at this relic. All rusted out. Oh, there's even an inscription here on the side. tough to really tell what it says. Plumbing and contractor, you see that part. Top portion, yeah, top portion is tough to read. Stepping here through some. Pretty cool old vehicle. And just up the way a bit to Williamsburg. It's a nice vintage Rexall sign right there, that corner store. And here in one of the store windows, they have what it looked like back in the day. That was kind of the same angle I was just standing at. And it appears as if the nickname for this town, there's a stage over here, is the Berg, right here on the side of the wall. The B-U-R-G, the Berg. Wits Restaurant and Illiards, and the B's missing. But up here, the old signage with the Pepsi logo still on it kind of faded out. Does not appear as if this is open. A lot of the businesses down here are open, but the billiard place no longer is the dentist office right here. Yeah, that is a beautiful antique right there. Still here after all these years and it's open. The store below it is open still. There's also this store on the outskirts of town. I think I'm gonna stop in and get myself a, a beverage. I have soda, I think I'm gonna get a soda. I could get an RC, they have RC here. It's called the Quick Shop. Food Mart, hours blank until blank. So it's insert your own hours. Or maybe they just don't. Maybe they're not 24 hours anymore. Maybe they don't have the hours they used to. This has open seven days a week. They're promoting Pepsi on this side. And there's a bunny rabbit right next to the quick. Because bunnies are quick, open seven days a week. No loitering or soliciting. They did not have RC Cola, but they did have a Pepsi. You know, I haven't had a Pepsi in a long time. It's probably been a couple months since I had a Pepsi. So I decided, you know, the advertising worked. They promoted Pepsi out front and RC. I was gonna get an RC, but I got a, a Pepsi. Heading down this way, I think I'm gonna try to drive 
another hour or two. And just a town or two over from where I just was, Fairview. Check out these Pan American trailers here. This is also the last community before crossing the state line out of Kentucky. And out of one state, crossing into another. Kentucky, right there. Tennessee, right here. Tennessee, I have arrived. Still continuing south. There's also the signage up here. First community pass there. I'm gonna drive another hour or two to my destination for the evening. I'm gonna follow them. But before crossing over the line, you see the sign down there, still in Kentucky. I'm gonna end the video right here. I thought this is pretty fascinating, this building. The Catholic Church up that way. This little alleyway with the windows. Looks to have been maybe the downtown or a business district at some point. Storefronts all grown over. It's like there's even a little bit of a fire. Oh, look at all the trees and the foliage grown up in there. Pretty cool. If these walls could talk. See if there's a date stamp up top. There is. This was called the Boston Lodge. And then adjacent to it was the Hillside Lodge. Same building. That's gonna do it for today. These stairs lead to nothing. I could just walk across the line, but I'm gonna drive my car. There's the sign right over there. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. Also, this alley has a lot of traffic. Here comes another car past me.